of you oh we worship you jesus hakuna mungu mwingine zaidi yako pokea sifa zote oh shalaka zokata re shandera boshike receive the glory receive the honor oh sharaka zata ripa sakatoma re sheka ripa ropa santa Roshe kata, rishanda katika, roshe taraboka. Receive the glory, receive the glory. Oh Lord Jesus, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Esha rakaza kata, repa zato barakesa, repa zita raka. Yesha tarabaka te. We lift our hands, we bow down before you. We worship you, we worship you. Oh sharaka zika, repa kata ton. Oh Lord Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. Oh Sharakazi Kata. Ropa Zata. Oh Oh 
Lord Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're Lord. You're wonderful. You're marvelous. Oh, Lord Jesus. How beautiful is your name, Father. Oh, Rakasekato. Ripakasandoka. Rishetarapa. Roshata. Yosheka. Roshantaraboku. Roshantarabo. Roshekate Rabaka. Yoshanta. Roshetaraboku. Roshintarepako. Roshantaboku. Lord Jesus, you are wonderful. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Your 
Repa sata, roche katika. Ripa sakata, romba zita bo. Roche katika, raba zoka zo. Roche taba, riba zoka ta. Roche kazo, riba zoka ta. Roche maro, roche kata, reche kazina. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Father. Oh, nasika tabu, reche kazi tabu, rocha kata riba zoka, rocha kata tabu, rocha. Rocha, rocha. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Rocha, rocha. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Rasoko, tu ko apa ju ya kut, kuinua jina la ku, kubari ki jina la ku, kutukuza jina la ku. Rosha tapa kazoto, ripa kazoto, rosha. Wawez, wawez, wawez amokozi, wawez angamo yo te, we we mwani. Waweza, waweza, waweza moko zi Unaweza mamo yote Wewe mwamilifu Waweza, waweza, waweza moko zi Genesis chapter number one and verse number 28. This scripture brings us to an understanding that God desires our fruitfulness. That it is desire of God for us to be fruitful in life. It is not his desire for us to be barren. It is not his desire for us to be unproductive. His desire is that we may be productive and fruitful. 
And this is what the Bible says. That then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So, I like to begin by telling us uh, that uh, fruitfulness means obtaining useful results. To be fruitful means that you have useful results. That you have results in your life. There are results that you can show that I am fruitful. Bonus if you will. It is also a sign of life and continuity of life. If you are unfruitful, then you do not have life. Anything that is not fruitful does not have life. Bonus if you will. Death is the one that is supposed to bring an end to fruitfulness. But as far as you are on the face of the earth, God is expecting you to be fruitful in every area that you are in. Bonus if you will. It is also a fulfillment of purpose. Because you see, after creation, God is giving the first instruction to man that before everything else, first be fruitful. Be fruitful. It is the first instruction. It is a command that you have to be fruitful. So as far as you are on the face of the earth, as far as you are a believer, you are born again, your number one assignment is to be fruitful. Born as if you will. Because it is God's purpose for man. Born as if you will. Every believer is expected to be fruitful. Every believer is expected to be fruitful. And that is why you are seeing Jesus. One day he is walking and he finds a tree that is not producing a fruit in its season. And he says that for this tree, because of failing to produce fruit in its season, it should be cut off. So as a believer, if you are not productive, if you are not fruitful, According to the standards of Jesus, you are supposed to be cut off. You are supposed to be cut off. When the gardener goes to the field and plants seeds, what he expects at the end of everything is for him to have a harvest. It's for the seed that he has planted to be fruitful. No gardener, no farmer goes to the field because he is idle. And he just wants to see things growing. His intention and desire is for that seed to be fruitful. So, when, uh, because, because God has planted us on the face of the earth, he has an expectation that be fruitful. And then you can see, after being fruitful, he says multiply. But you can never multiply before you get to the level of being fruitful. You cannot multiply if you're not fruitful. And then after multiplication, it goes to subduing and having dominion. But the basic thing of all, it is being fruitful. That is the first thing. Without fruitfulness, every other thing cannot happen. Bonus if you. Then another thing I want us to understand before we pray is that fruitfulness brings God all the glory. When you are fruitful, you give God. God receives glory. Bonus if you will. And so, the, so today I want us to pray and ask God to help us to be fruitful. There is another scripture in the book of Psalms chapter number 1 and verse number 3. Let us read it. It will give us a better understanding. That he shall be a, like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. That brings forth its fruit in its season. Whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. But, uh, okay, let, let us begin from verse number one. So that we can see who is this person. That shall gonna be fruitful. The blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful too. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. These are the characteristics of believers. These are the characteristics of believers. So any believer, as a believer, you are supposed to bear fruits. You are supposed to bear fruits. Verse number three again. 
he shall be like a tree. A believer is supposed to be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And he is supposed to bring forth fruits in his season. In his season. And Jesus brings us to an understanding that if we are not fruitful, then we need to be cut off. So I want us to pray to God this evening and tell God to help us to be fruitful so that we can be fruitful as individuals in our families, in our ministry, in our workplaces, in our businesses. Because that is the intention of God. That is the desire of God. That is what he wants us to do. His desire is that we may be fruitful. Open your mouth and pray to God that he may give you the grace, that he may grant you the grace to be fruitful because being fruitful is a part of fulfilling your assignment on earth. Being fruitful is part of your assignment. It is a command. God is commanding us to be fruitful. Oh God, I pray, may you make me to be fruitful. May you make me to be fruitful. May I be a fruitful believer. May I be a fruitful believer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I can no longer be fruitless. I can no longer be fruitless. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the grace that makes men to be fruitful rest upon me tonight. Rest upon me tonight. Rest upon me tonight. I will be fruitful. I will be fruitful in and out of season. I will be fruitful in everything that I do. I will be fruitful in every area that you have planted me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, may you make me to be fruitful. Oh God, make me to be a fruitful believer. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, oh God, that my family shall be fruitful. My family members shall be fruitful. The spirit that causes fruitlessness in my family. I decree today, let it die in the name of Jesus. It is our season to be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, as a ministry, we pray, may you make us to be fruitful, may we be fruitful, may we be fruitful, may we be fruitful, may we be fruitful. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare in the name of Jesus that we are a fruitful ministry. That we are a fruitful ministry. We are a fruitful ministry. In every area of our lives, we shall be fruitful. We shall bear fruit. We shall bear fruit. We shall bear fruit. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. It is not your idea. It is not your desire for men to be fruitless. For men to be barren. It is not your idea. Oh God. That is not your idea. That is not your desire. That is not your desire. Your desire is for us to be fruitful. Your desire is for us to be fruitful. Your desire is for us to be fruitful. And we declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Barrenness can never be in our tents again. Barrenness can never be in our lives again. Fruitlessness can never be our portion again. We shall bear fruits in our season. 
We shall bear fruits in our lives. We shall bear fruits in our families. We shall bear fruits as a ministry. We shall bear fruits in every area of our lives. We shall bear fruits in our workplaces. We shall bear fruits in our businesses. We shall bear fruits in every area that you have planted us, O God. Barrenness can never be our portion. Fruitlessness can never be our portion. It is not your desire. You have commanded us to be fruitful. You have commanded us to be fruitful, O God. And we declare, we cannot experience otherwise. We can never experience otherwise. Fruitfulness is our portion. Fruitfulness is our portion. Lord, as we hear your word tonight, I pray that you may speak to us. I pray that you may restore and repair destinies in this house. I pray that your word may bring light in our lives, O oh God, and understanding to the simple. Your word has the power to change. Your word has the power to transform. And we declare that is what shall happen in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, believing and trusting. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I want you to help me celebrate our worship team for a job perfectly done. Hallelujah. Now you can have your seats in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I take this opportunity to welcome all of us to the service tonight. It is a joy to see you in this house and also to welcome our online family. And I believe that you too shall be blessed as we will be blessed in this house tonight. Buona sifiwe. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our Father in the house. And uh, I'd like us to put our hands together for him and celebrate him in a good way. He is the angel of the house. He is the one that he has got on our behalf. Hallelujah. We have our mom in the house. So, <laughs> you know when we start talking about moms. <laughs> Let us put our hands together for our mom before I start <laughs> saying a lot of things in this house. Hallelujah. <laughs> We also have our pastors in the house, our pastor Benson Moturi and our mom Anne Ben. Let us celebrate them. We bless the Lord for you. Buona Sifiwe. Today, by the grace of God, I'd like to bring us a message. This message has been in my heart for so many months. God spoke it to me, I think, around four or five months ago. And uh, I've never spoken it anywhere. I've never, I think the only person that has had it is faith. We've talked about it several times. Anytime I receive a, a word from God, I share sometimes, not every time. There are, there, there are things that we share and others that we keep to ourselves. Hallelujah. Some revelations are for us. Bonus if you will. So I want us to pray. I want to bring us a message that I have titled Strategies of the Enemy. To stop you from fulfilling your destiny. Let me take it again. Strategies of the enemy to stop you from fulfilling your destiny. If you have been a member of this house, if you are a, if you are a son and a daughter in this house, then you know very well that in this house we talk so much about destiny of men. Born as if you will. And let me tell you, one of the greatest battles that every believer faces on the face of the earth, it is the battle of destiny. There is no greater battle that is, that is bigger than the battle of destiny. The devil fights so hard to stop men from accomplishing their destiny. 
born as if he will. His desire is to see men not fulfilling their glorious destinies, not becoming what God desired for them to become, not arising to the height that God desired for them to rise. Born as if he will. And so because of that, he has come up with strategies that are very effective if believers are not careful. These strategies are effective if believers are not keen enough, if they are not attentive enough to discover that these are strategies of the devil. Born as if he will. I would like us to understand that the battle of destiny never began the day that you were born. The battle between you and the devil concerning your destiny did not begin the day that you arrived on the face of the earth. But it began right, right from the garden of Eden. And I want, us, I want to, show us, to show us something in Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. On Sunday I said something, was it Sunday or the other Sunday? that uh, I reminded us of something that Bishop told us around two or three years ago, that the enemy is very determined and very experienced in battles and warfare. He is very determined and he is very experienced in battles and warfare. So when he starts, in fact, not when he starts, he already started the day you came. Not even the day you came. The, from the foundation of the earth, when he, when, which, since the day, since the day of, uh, when, when, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when this happened, when God said that there is enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, born as if you will, that is when the battle began. That is when the enmity began. So the devil is your enemy. And because of his pursuit to ensure that you do not fulfill your destiny, he will do anything with all his determination and with all his experience. Because you can imagine, if this battle started since the days of Eden, it means that the devil has fought men for so long. The enmity has been there for so long. The battle has been there for so long. Born as if you will. Let us read this scripture. Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. That and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. So this enmity was not just between them, it was not just between the serpent who was an image of the devil. It was not just a normal snake, but it was a serpent that was the image, it was representing the devil. So the enmity was not just between the devil. It was not just between Satan and the woman. The scripture is saying that the, en the enmity will also be between the seed of the serpent, the seed of the snake, the seed of Satan, and the seed of the woman. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So it is either you, you crush the head of the serpent or the serpent bruises your heel. Bonus if you So if you do not bruise, if you do not crush his head, then he bruises your heel. Hallelujah. If you do not crush his head, because one thing about serpents, even if you can hit it with a hammer on the tail, it cannot die. Even if you hit it on the belly, it cannot die. The life of the snake is in its head. When you crush the head, that is when it dies. Born as if you And since then, the devil has come up with crazy strategies to ensure that he stops men from becoming everything that God ordained for them to become. And he's doing everything possible. And uh, there are several battles. There are a lot of battles. There are a lot of battles. There's the battle of direction where he fights you and brings you out of the pathway where you are moving without direction because it means any time you're moving without direction, it means that any path, you can take any path for away. Because if you do not know where you are going, then any path can lead you. There is another battle, the battle of vision. Because the Bible says that where there is no vision, people perish. So anytime you miss your vision, then the, definitely your end is determined. You will perish. There are other battles like the battles of obstruction where he obstructs you 
from seeing the real thing. Bona sifiwe. Hallelujah. But today I want us to handle two battles. I believe that we will be able, or maybe one. And uh, God, I know God will bless us. Number one battle that I will handle tonight is the battle of uh, making believers not to know God. Making believers not to know God. Give us Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 32. Daniel 11 and verse number 32. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be made strong and carry out exploits, great exploits. The people who know their God shall be strong and they shall carry out great exploits. So the moment you fail to know God, you can never be strong. The moment you fail to know God, you can never do exploits. Born as if you will. Let us read another scripture in the book of John chapter number 17 and verse number 3 to verse number 4. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. This was Jesus that was speaking. That, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, that believers may know you, the only true God. This is the prayer of Jesus. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, verse number four. I have gl glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. So Jesus is saying that I wish that these people, I pray that these people may know you because myself I have finished the work. And I want to bring in another aspect here. That the biblical knowing is not limited to knowledge. The moment the Bible is saying, that uh, they may know you, that we may know God. It is not limited to the, to the knowledge dimension. It is not limited to the information dimension. Bonus, if you will. And uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, uh, it has the aspect of intimacy in it. The knowing that the Bible is talking about has the aspect of intimacy in it. Give me the book of Genesis chapter number 4 and verse number 1. Genesis Four, 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 and verse number one. That we may know God. That and Adam knew Eve, his wife. I want to show you the kind of knowing I'm talking about. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore came and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Is the Bible saying that and Adam acquired information about Eve? It is saying that he knew Eve. How do I put this? Can we read it in Amplified? Maybe it will break it down for us. Um, NLT, the same scripture. And um, no, no, NLT. And Adam had sexual relationship, relations with his wife Eve. And she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Can you see the kind of knowing the Bible is talking about? It is about intimacy. So God is not calling for us to know him from the intellect level. He is not calling us to know him from the knowledge level. But he is calling us that we may know him from the level of intimacy. And this is one of the strategies of the devil. Because the moment you miss it out on intimacy with God, you can never accomplish your destiny. Born as if you And to prove it, to prove it, let us jump to verse number 25 of the same chapter. So that you can see that it was not it was not the writer of Genesis who slipped. Okay, he never slipped the tongue. Who who slipped the fingers? And 
Adam had sexual relations with his wife again. If you go back to New King James, you'll see that it says that Adam knew his wife again. Again. So this one confirms for us that the knowing of the Bible, it is the knowing of intimacy. God is calling us, is calling, it's because of speaking in tongues for long. God is calling us for intimacy. Not just knowing him on the intellect level. Than knowing that God can do this is calling us for us to have a relationship and an intimate relationship. And when men miss it, it is one of the strategies of the devil so that men can miss out on destiny. Let me show you something. Take me to Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 11. The Bible says this, that any time, you know, intimacy, what intimacy does, I'm not sure I did a research. This intimacy, what it does, it brings connection. Is it true? Intimacy brings connection. It is true. Um, Bishop has confirmed for us. I knew it from Google level. But now I, it has been confirmed to me. That intimacy brings connection. So the moment a man misses out on, on intimacy with God, the moment any person misses out on intimacy, then there is a disconnection. Did you get that one? So, so when, 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 when you do not know you are God, you will not be intimate with him. And when you do are not intimate with God, you are disconnected from God. You are disconnected from God. One thing about Genesis chapter number one, when God was creating, he was speaking to the water and telling the water that may you bring forth fish. When he wanted the plants, he never spoke to the water. He spoke to the ground and told the ground, bring forth vegetation and plants. Bonus if you will. So what did that mean? That the ground became the source for the plants and the vegetations. And the water became the source for the fish and the, and the marine creatures. Bonus if you will. But in verse number 25 of Genesis. Okay, let us read from verse number 11. Verse, I'm really running on time. Let that the earth bring forth grass. So he spoke to the, to the earth and told earth to bring forth grass. The herb and the yield seeds. So the ground became the source of the plants. Born as if you Verse number 20. Verse number 20. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. So he spoke to the water and told the water to bring forth the fish. So the water became the source and the fish became the resource. Born as if you will. But in verse number 24, the Bible says that and God spoke to himself. 24, 24. That God spoke to himself and said, is it 24? It is 25. It is 25. 25. And God made the beast. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 26, it is 26. 26. No, Genesis 1, 26. That God spoke to himself. That then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Born as if you will. For the water we have seen, the water became the source of the fish, and the fish became the resource. Born as if you will. For the plants, the ground became the source, and the plants and the vegetations became the resource. So the, 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 the source of the vegetation was the ground. But when it came to man, he spoke to himself and said, that, Let us make man in our own image. So God himself became the source, and we became the the resource. We became the resource. And let me tell you something. When you take the fish from the water, is it the fish that dies or is it the water? When you take the fish from the water, who dies? The water or the fish? It is the, it is the fish. When you take a plant from the ground, is it the ground that dies or is it the 
plan that dies. It is the plan that dies. So what about when you take man from God? Is it God who dies or is it man who dies? It is man who dies. It is man who dies. Anytime there is a disconnection of the resource and the source, it is the resource that dies. Because the life of the resource is connected to the source. Born as if you will. Man became the resource. God became the source. When there is disconnection, it is the resource that dies. Not the, it's not the source. Born as if you will. So, this brings us to an understanding that the resource must remain connected to the source for the resource to remain alive. But we have so many people that have disconnected from the source, so they are not living. Born as if you will. Hallelujah. You know, I read Genesis chapter number is it three or four? Where the Bible says that and God, or two there, that God told Abraham, and not Abraham, told Adam, that if you eat the fruit of the, of the middle tree, that you will die. Is, the, is that what God told Adam? He told him that if you eat that fruit of the center tree, you will die. Did Adam eat the fruit? Yes, he ate. And then he lived for 930 years after eating the fruit. Was God lying? God was not lying. Because I discovered that there are three kinds of death. Number one death is the death that you die and we bury you under the soil. Six feet or four feet? Six. Six feet down. The second death, it is the death where you die spiritually. The third death is the death that Paul, that, that, that Paul talks about, that I crucify myself daily. But the most dangerous death of them all is the spiritual death. It is the spiritual death. Men have done research and they have discovered many places of the Bible. They have discovered where Jesus used, where Jesus used to pray. They have discovered where Jesus used to do his things. They have discovered where Abraham used to live. They have discovered everything about the Bible. But there is no man that has ever discovered the place called Eden. Or is there? I've never heard. No man has ever discovered that place called Eden. And that brings us to an understanding that Eden was not a place. Eden was in the presence of God. And the Bible says that when Adam ate the fruit, he was driven out of the garden. He was driven out of the presence. And that is where you are seeing that God is coming and calling, Adam, Adam, where are you? Because he used to find him in the presence. But this time round he came and he was not in the presence. The spiritual death is the worst of all. It's the most dangerous death. The most dangerous death. There are people who are worshipping God, but they are dead. There are people who are serving God effectively, but they died long time ago because they disconnected from the source. A resource that is disconnected from the source is a lifeless resource. Is a lifeless resource. So, when you do not know God, there is a disconnection. Bonus if you will. And the devil is fighting so hard for your intimacy with God to go down. To eliminate that intimacy with God. Because the moment that intimacy is not there, the moment you fail to know you are God, you are a lifeless believer. You are a lifeless believer. Bonus if you will. And that is why you are seeing that Adam is living 930 years later after the eating the fruit, fruit. And he is still alive. He is still alive, but out of the presence. Born as if you will. Oh God. 
Joshua understood the importance of remaining connected. This is according to Joshua 24 and verse number 14 to 15. He is telling people that choose today. Now therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river. And in Egypt, serve the Lord. 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He understood that him being disconnected to, from God meant that he would become lifeless. And we pray to God that we will not have lifeless believers in this church. Men that died and they are just walking. Men that lost their intimacy with God long time ago. Dead people can worship. Spiritually dead people can worship. Spiritually dead people can serve God. We come here and they jump and we dance. They are in nurturing, doing very well. But they died long time ago. Adam still lived 930 years more. But outside the presence. Bona Sifio. Man came from God. And he needs to remain connected to God. And this will happen by him knowing God. By him having an intimate relationship with God. And as we have seen, intimacy brings connection. So without intimacy, there is a disconnection. Hallelujah. A river that, that, uh, that, that forgets its source. A river that drifts from its source, that river eventually dries up. So if your source is God and you are disconnecting from God, you will, you will eventually dry up whether you like it or not. If you disconnect from God, you will eventually dry up. Hallelujah. And it is one of the tools of the devil to ensure that you miss out on destiny. Not knowing God. Not knowing God. Bonus if you. Not knowing God. Not having the intimate relationship with God. Because he knows if it happens, disconnect is inevitable. Disconnect is inevitable. And it happens automatically. It happens automatically. That is why you are saying that now God is coming back and he's looking for Adam and he cannot find him because the moment he messed up, disconnect took place. Bonus if you will. Oh God. Let us read Rast. Oh God. We have spoken in tongues so much. We are even. Let us finish with uh, Proverbs 5 and verse number 6. And then we go to the next one. In the next few minutes. Can you read it in amplified version? Did I miss it? Amplified. She loses sight and walks not in the path of blood. I think I missed it. Another version, NLT. Which one did I read? She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths are crooked, but she knows it not. I'm not understanding what went wrong there. But uh, let me take us to the, to, the ne to, the, to the second battle, to the second strategy. The second strategy of the devil. The first one we have seen, that it is the devil ensuring that you do not know God. That you do not get to know God. Because when you don't get to know God, you get disconnected from him. Number two battle is the battle of identity. The battle of who you are. The moment you do not discover who you are, 
then you can never fulfill your destiny. There are three kinds of destinies. Who people tell you that you are or who people think that you are. That is number one, identity. You can build on that identity and think that you are the person that people tell you that you are. Number two, identity is who you think you are. The person who in your thoughts you tell yourself, I am this. Born as if you will. And then the third one is who you truly are. The person that God created in you. Born as if you will. And the Bible says, and, and uh, before we read, the Bible says in Proverbs 23 and verse number 7, that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So whoever you think in your heart, in your mind, in your heart, that is who you eventually become. So the kind of person you have in your mind, if you tell yourself that you are a failure, then definitely you will become a failure. But if you believe in your heart and in your mind that you are a success, then eventually you will become the success that you have in mind. The person that you think you are is the person that you end up being. Born as if you and so the devil is bringing up so, so many identities, trying to make us think that we are the people that we are not. I listened to one song by, I think it is Tasha Cobbs, and she was saying that, um, that uh, when the devil tells me that I am this, I definitely know that I am the other thing. And if he tells me that I am the other thing, I definitely know that I am not that thing. Because whoever he tells me, he is lying. Born as if he will. So, the devil is fighting men on the basis of identity. Who you think you are will control your life. Will control how you behave. Will control how you respond. Will control everything that revolves around your life. If you think that you are a failure, you will act like a failure. You will respond like a failure. Born as if you were. Everything you do, you will do it like a failure. But if you believe that you are a success, born for greater works, born to do great things, then that is what you manifest. You respond as the great person. You respond as the successful person. A very crucial tool of the devil. A very crucial tool of the devil. The answer to the question of who you are will determine your destination. The answer to the question of who you are. Where were you? The answer that you give is the one that determines your destination. Because that person that you think you are, that is what you will eventually become. As a man thinketh, so is he. He might not be that thing at that moment, but eventually he will become that person. Proverbs 23 and verse number 7. As a man thinketh in his heart. Our father told us the other day that the heart is also the mind. Dada, it is true. Yeah, I cannot ask. Bishop, as you know, she can't go to Rasa. But uh, your heart is directly connected to your mind. Born as if you were. So when the Bible is saying that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It simply means that the person that you see yourself in your mind, that is who you are. That is who you will become. It can be able to determine what your destination will be like, what your destination will be. Hallelujah. Because if you see yourself as a failure because of past failures, then definitely at a time you will become that failure that you see in your mind. Because it will control the way you do things. It will control the way you respond to things. It will control the way you do your everything. It is your perception of your identity that will determine who you will become. Listen to this. You will never do anything above the capacity of the person that you think you are in your mind. You see, the capacity of that person you have in your mind, you can never do anything beyond the capacity of that person. That, 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 that person you think in your mind that you are, the picture of the person you are in your mind, in the physical, you will not do anything that that person in your mind doesn't have, doesn't have that capacity. So he will control your capacity on your manifestation 
on the physical. Hallelujah. Understanding your true identity brings you to the place of functionality. Because if you don't have, if, 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 uh, okay, how do I put this? That, uh, that uh, understanding your true identity brings you to the place of your functionality. When you understand who you truly are, who God created you to be, then you become functional in that area. Because you cannot be functional on an area that you are not aware of. You cannot be functional on something that you are not. You cannot be functional as a successful man, as a prosperous man as God has created you to be, yet in your mind you are seeing a failure. Yet in your mind you are seeing a defeated person. Yet in your mind you are seeing a broken person. You are seeing an incapacitated person. When you know who you are, then you will know what you are not. The moment you discover who you are, you will know who you are not. Hallelujah. Then it will be very easy for you to look back at the enemy and tell him, I am not this, I know who I am. But we are having a problem because for us Christians, some of us, we don't know who we are. We are just flowing with what is happening. We are just flowing with what is happening. We are just flowing with what people are telling us that we are. Because let me tell you, even if a fish spends all its life trying to, to, to climb a tree, it will never climb. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. Even if it, it is born today, it will never climb the tree. Because that is not its identity. It doesn't have the identity of uh, jumping, jumping over trees like a monkey. Born as if you will. So we are having men that are walking in a fake identity. So in their fake identity, they are trying to do things that they cannot be able to do, even if they spend all their lives trying to do it. Born as if you will. All their lives because they have never understood who they are. So a person that has not understood who he is, then that person cannot fulfill destiny. Because how will he be able to determine the direction to take? How will he be able to respond to things according to the man that God created them to be? How will he be able to function? There is no functionality in the absence of, no, in the absence of identity. When identity is removed, functionality is also removed. Because what are you functioning on if you don't know? Hi. Hey. Bonus if you Oh God. Where were we? But who are you? I think before, let, let us conclude by knowing who we are. Bonus if you Give me the book of First John chapter number 3 and verse number 1 to verse number 2. Who are you? Who are you? Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. The first thing, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of the Most High King. In fact, the Bible is saying, the scripture that we read as we are doing the prayers, that he created men in his own likeness. So, being a child of God means that you have the advantages of a child of God. Means that you have the idea, the, the, uh, not, not the son, let me not um, misquote that. Being a child does not mean that you are a son. There is a very big difference on that. Let me not go that direction. But you are God's children. Born as if you will. And you can see, we go back to the previous verse. Verse number one. I was not yet done with it. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that, that we may be called the children of God. So number one thing, you are a child of God. Number two, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. We go to verse number two now. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed that we shall be but we know that when he is revealed, we shall become like him. We are supposed to become like him. Number two thing we have, uh, number three, we have the hope of becoming like him. 
we have the hope of, of ascending when, when that time comes and becoming like him. Bonus if you will. Let me take you somewhere else. Genesis 1 and verse number 26. Genesis 1 and verse number 26. You bear the image of God. You are created in God's likeness. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So you are created according to the image of God. So your image, the way you are, you are created, let, let, let us make man in our own image and according to our likeness. So you look like God. You are supposed to behave like God. You are supposed to do your things like God. Bonus if you will. Number two, you have number, number what now? Number five, you, are, you have dominion. We can see it. That uh, after being created in the image and the likeness of God, let the man have dominion over the fish, over the sea, and over everything. So you, another identity is that uh, you have dominion. You have dominion. You carry power within you. Bonus if you will. Another thing. Verse number 28 of the same scripture. You are blessed. 28. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful. So number one, the, 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 the thing is that uh, you are blessed. And because of the blessing, you are supposed to be fruitful and to multiply. Bonus if you will. So when you understand that God expects you to multiply, that it is in you to multiply, it is a command that he released. It is not even an instruction. No, no, not an instruction. It is, it is not a request. It is a command. It is a command. Bonus if you will. Where do we finish now? Matthew 5, 13 and 14. You are the salt and the light. You are the salt and the light. So when you see yourself, you're supposed to know that you are the light. What does the light do? It sheds light. It, 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 it eliminates darkness. So by you alone, anytime there is darkness, anytime you, spend in a, you, you step in a place where there is darkness, the darkness is supposed to be dispersed because you are a light. Bonus, if you will. You are the salt. What the salt does is that it, uh, it gives taste and it also preserves. Bonus, if you will. So, understanding your identity will help you to understand your value. Bonus if you. Understanding your identity helps men to understand their value. Because of what? You know, you know the value of something by the price that was used to purchase that thing. You know the value of something by the price or by what was used to purchase that thing. What was used to purchase you as a believer? The blood of Jesus Christ. Born as if you were. And uh, I think if I go beyond that, I will, uh, I will take more time. But uh, <clears throat> these are strategies and they are just some of the strategies that the devil uses, that the enemy uses to ensure that men do not get to their destiny. And they are very effective if a believer is not keen. They are very effective strategies. Because what happens when you do not know God, disconnection takes place. Bonus if you will. And when disconnection takes place, life is taken away from you. It is not the source that dies when the resource is removed. It is the resource that dies. Number two, we've seen identity. When the devil messes your identity, then you can never become. Because you can never be greater than the person that you believe you are back in your mind. You can never rise higher than the person that you think you are in your mind. You cannot do anything beyond the capacity of that man in your mind. Bonus if you. Hallelujah. And I believe I, I want to stop there. I believe that God has spoken to us tonight. And I believe that the word that we've had that God shall help us to apply that knowledge, to apply that word that he has released by his spirit so that we can be able to 
conquer this battle. This battle of destiny. This battle of destiny. Those are some of the strategies. But they are very effective strategies if believers are not king. Bonus, if you will. In just a minute, I want you to bow your head wherever you are, just where you are, and ask God to help you to overcome these strategies, to help you to rise above these strategies, that you will know God, that you will remain intimately connected to him. Because the moment you get disconnected, you lose your life. Oh, shara zagata gata. Lord, I pray, may I remain connected to you. May I remain connected to you, O oh God. The Bible says that and I may know you, O oh God. Father, may I know you, O oh God. May I know you, O oh God. May I remain connected to you. May my intimate relationship with you never be cast by anything or anyone. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that the devil cannot mess up with my identity. The devil can not mess mess up with who I am. Oh God. Razeka parigadaya. Mazerika soria. Emande repakaya. Eranezo perigada. Erante kozika paya. Raneze gede gedea. My identity cannot be messed up with by the devil. My identity cannot be tampered with by the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The devil that tampers with the identity identities of men uh, to stop them from achieving their uh, glorious destinies. Uh, let that devil be defeated today. Let that devil be defeated today. The Bible says uh, that and the devil was defeated. Uh, he was defeated uh, publicly. It was not a private affair. He is a defeated devil. He is a defeated Satan. And today we declare that he is still defeated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you. God, we give you all the praise. Thank you for your word. May it perform your work in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen and put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> and you can sustain it as you stand on your feet. Sustain it as you stand on your feet. So continue clapping for God. Now I want us to celebrate our father as we invite him with a lot of humility to come and conclude for us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord again. Let us also celebrate Brother Laurent. Hallelujah. Wasn't that powerful? It was awesome. It was awesome. And uh, uh, I will for sure listen to it again. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Okay. I just want to say one thing, then I allow us to give our offerings. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 15, and verse number 5, that if you remain with me, you shall bear fruits. And when the verse is ending, Jesus is saying, for without me, you can do nothing. So for you to be able to do anything, you need to remain connected. Your fruitfulness is determined by your connection to God. And I pray 
that the Lord will give us grace to remain connected. Please lift up your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, grant me grace to remain connected to you. Because that is the secret of success in this life. Remaining connected to God. And I also want to ask God to help each one of us to always remember who we are. So that even when we do things, we shall do things based on who we are. You know, the examples that uh, Brother Orend has given, the very powerful. And one day I was watching a clip and I saw a crocodile had gone out of the water and now they were a herd, I don't know whether you call them herd of rayons, and they were, they wanted to eat up the crocodile. And it was, it could not do anything. It was powerless when it is not, it is in its own territory. But the crocodile ran back to the waters. And when it's at the waters, because it is where it's supposed to be, the lions could not come. So no matter how powerful you are, if you are not in your place, if you don't know who you are, as he said, you cannot function at your maximum. So may God give us grace to remain connected. May God give us grace to always remember who we are in God. That was very powerful. Uh, continue speaking in tongues. And uh, if you're speaking in tongues, will cause you to do what you've done. Then continue. We give you, tell him we give you permission. Yes, 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 yes. You know, there is nothing that makes a father happy when the son is doing great things. I, I am not, uh, I listened to somebody, I don't want to say what I wanted to say, but I listened to a pastor who was giving a testimony the other day. And he was told by his father, if you preach like me, then you are useless. You must preach better than me as your father. You are climbing on my shoulders, so you must go higher than me. And that is what I want in this church. Everybody else must be able, when you stand, you are standing on the shoulders of your father. Now, go as high as you can by that grace. It is time to worship God with our substances. So please prepare yourself to, to give. Wow, okay. Let me not continue because it's 6.30 already. Let's pray for the offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us in a powerful way today. To you alone be all the glory and all the honor. We pray for Brother Ronent that, Father, you will continue to grace him and to anoint him more and more and to use him for this generation. Let your hand rest upon his life in the mighty name of Jesus. And now as we give, we pray that you bless each one of us. Increase us in every area of our lives. 
We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. So there is a number that is appearing on the screen in case you want to use the M-Pesa number. And, or otherwise, you can just lay your giving on the altar. And you're most welcome now in Jesus' name. Amen. Joy, we, we, we need to give that testimony that you, 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 no. Huh? I'll give it for you. From the side. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. She will give her testimony. I, I, she is waiting for Dedan to call her on Sunday to give the testimony. <laughs> and she doesn't want even me to give it on her behalf. Okay, let's celebrate God for what he has done for her. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. We want to finish the meeting with the words of grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. You are blessed. You are highly favored. Go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen.